Okay. Uh, talking about Linux, Meta's Linux user space is Michael Lind. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, can everyone hear me okay? Like, uh, this is a microphone, right? Okay. Hi, um, I'm Michelle, and I'm uh, going to talk about, so the original title is, you know, like a meta, uh, um, my team, like uh, working on Linux distributions. I kind of reworked it a bit to like, um, based on feedback from the previous talk to like uh, talk a bit more about my journey to becoming like, um, to like uh, where I am today. So let me know which one works better. So let's see, did I skip this? So I'm a production engineer at Meta, like uh, for weird historical reasons, we call it production engineering, but it's really just SRE basically. <coughs> Somewhere between site reliability and software engineering. I've contributed to uh, different uh, Linux distributions for a while, like uh, Fedora since 2003, Debian since 2022, and that's where you can reach me on Macedon and Matrix. And this is my team. Uh, we are the Linux user space team. Like uh, our job is basically like we contribute upstream to a lot of software projects, and then like we integrate them into Linux distributions. This is where mostly my uh, the production engineers come in, and then like we use them internally in our production fleet. So who I'm targeting this talk at? It's for people who are open source uh, community members and like you want to know like how you can get paid to work in open source maybe, or want to hear from someone who is, or companies who are like, hey, we use all these open source products, and like, um, how can we you know, contribute better, and why should we contribute? So this is where the tangent begins. Uh, I, I just realized that this is probably outing my age, but anyway. <laughs> so, yeah. A long time ago, I had, you know, like, my dad brought home a 286, running MS-DOS 3.3, which is, the hard disk was too big. Oh. We had a 40 megabyte hard disk, MS-DOS 3.3 only let you do 32 megabyte partitions. So I have drive C and D and A. A for the floppy, C and D for the hard disk, and there was no B, I think. And yeah, we, oops. This lasted us all the way until like, um, you know, like, um, until uh, Windows 3.0, because we have four megabyte of RAM, which is enough. Like, you have, you have games where you have to press a turbo button to slow down your computer because it was designed for like a fixed uh, IBM PC clock speed. And you know, like I, I have to go to my neighbor's house to play like uh, the fancy games that want 3x6 and above because they need EMM memory. And yeah, I dabbled in some programming, not that much. Like uh, my father told me to not go into computer science because obviously I don't really like programming. What is it? But yeah, like um, our second computer is 4x6 uh, with 12 megabyte of RAM. And then it's like, ooh, you know, I can try Windows NT, which came in floppies, and OS2, which I really liked. And then Windows 95 came along, and it was a letdown, and it took over the world. Really sad. I had a PCXT. <laughs> PCXT as well. Yes. I, I skipped that. Like, I went to like 2x6, and like, I, I didn't have all the. All the funky, you know, like people talking about Amigas and Ataris and Commodores, like not in my country, I didn't have. But yeah. I only and had then, a ColecoVision. Oh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> and then I was in, uh, I went to Singapore to boarding school, which is great. They have this thing called libraries. It's like, oh my God, you know, you can read about Macs and like Linux, like, oh, this is amazing. And I don't have a PC. Laptops cost, you know, you read a computer magazine, it's like, shiny laptop. It's a lightweight laptop. It's only five pounds, four thousand yeah. dollars. It's like uh, I don't have that money, right? Like, uh, and like, uh, for reference, color lasers came out around the same time, and it's two, twenty thousand dollars. So, I also don't have that. Now they're two hundred dollars. But yeah, you know, like libraries have computers and they run Windows. But you know, there's oh, you can play with IRC, like uh, fun. And uh, I read books like Take Down, like oh, like uh, this Unix thing is really cool. And then. Finally, next goal, I have my own computer. It's a Pentium 2. Woohoo. I bought it with the wrong video card. <laughs> <laughs> it's like if people have like nightmares of NVIDIA, this is the NVIDIA of the time. It's called uh, 3D Labs Promedia 2. I and the, one of those. Oh, <laughs> you too. The only distribution that works out of the box is Suzy. 
So I have SUSE running for a while. I hated the AST because like any single configuration change you made, it rebuilt your whole configs. And sometimes you get it wrong. A lot so, of times. Yes, mm -hmm. it's painful. Like uh, if you have used cockpit, cockpit is much better. And then I, I played around with Debian. Like we had some, like the school lab was like throwing away that old 3x6 SX 25 megahertz. And you find out how slow it is when like, um, so distributions like Fedora, like they pre-compile like uh, bytecodes for things like uh, Python, because why not, right? Like uh, Debian does not. You install Debian, you install Emacs. Emacs tries to compile its own bytecodes. It took a few hours on this machine. <laughs> And, but yeah, like it's fun, right? Like uh, there's like a uh, after step, window maker, like uh, there's all this. I love window maker because it came with like a uh, teams with really, really cool wallpapers. Mm. And Davide here just packaged uh, the Wayland port of window maker so we can use it now. <laughs> Ooh. Yes. I didn't Wayland like maker. how, this is before XCG open. Mm -hmm. There's no, uh, so there's no standard for desktop menus. And the one thing I hate about Debian is that Debian has its own menu which works, but inconsistently, and like, it looks ugly, so. And not everything is compatible with it. <laughs> yes, yeah, I could. But yeah, like, so like, um, I, I was, at some point I was considering like, hey, you know, this is really cool, I want to contribute back, right? But I was like, I lived in a school in the countryside, you know, like, uh, I don't have a car, you know, like, to go to town, you take a bus, and then you have to take another bus, like, how do I even meet Debian people so I can, so they can vouch for me, right? Because you have to meet someone in person, like uh, they check your ID, okay, you know, you are who you say you are, and then they will sign your key. So it's like, fine, you know. <clears throat> and then like why I switch back to like uh, Red Hat, uh, this was for a while, is um, I went to university. They have like, uh, they wired up the dorm, like uh, you have internet in your room, amazing. Uh, the first day I took down the network by accident. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently my computer became the gateway for like the whole like uh, building. And like the sysadmin took down my like uh, laptop and I went to, I went to like uh, the room and was like, I cannot access the internet. It's like, yes, your computer was taking over like the network. So we had to like uh, ban the MAC address. <laughs> don't know what happened, but I was like, okay, I, I clearly don't know what I'm doing here. Let's, let's do something like uh, easier. Let's do that hat. And it's fun, like, you know, like, um, I had 300 Mbps, which was really fast at the time. I can, I can run, if I'm bored, like, in the computer lab, I can actually run, like, ICQ, running, like, uh, on my computer with, like, X11 forwarding. <coughs> cool stuff. Um, you know, like, uh, I had a, I had a email from Apple telling me that, you know, like, hey, I made a team for enlightenment that's too much like macOS, you know, like, no, this is not okay. <laughs> and I should have kept the email. I wonder, I, and I, I just took an, an existing team and I simplified it, right? I was like, I wonder if that guy got a takedown too. But yeah, and I come on, KD 1.0, fun times. <clears throat> this was when I was actually a medical student and that obviously didn't work out. <laughs> Probably because I spent too much time, you know, like uh, configuring Linux. But, but yeah, so um, next time. So I moved to a different place, did computer science. There was no internet in the dorm. So it's fun, right? Like, uh, so, you know, you have to be resourceful. Like, you go to the computer lab, I had no laptop, right? So I cannot just bring the laptop. So and it's like, uh, I want to copy, like, I want to download all these RPMs to, like, upgrade my system. And, like, how do I bring it over? Well, floppies, right? I'm like, okay, make a, make a giant tar, split them up with split so they fit into, like, floppy sized things, copy them all one by one. And, you know, floppies are so reliable, of course, right? Mm -hmm. So you go back to your dorm, and then you like uh, you try to join them together, and then this number ten out of twelve has a checksum error. Boom! You go back to the computer it. lab, and you hope you have not deleted the files. You can just copy that one disk. <laughs> but yeah, like um, eventually, I actually have like internet, and like um, hey, um, you know, there's um, I so I was on Red Hat Linux, uh, it, not Fedora, and not Red Hat Enterprise Linux. This is before that. Uh, and I was like, you know, I want to use like the new like a version of Evolution or like some other programs. And I like started like um, recompiling them, backporting. And, and then like um, Warren Togami who started Fedora like way back when, like uh, 2003, was like, hey, do you want to get involved in this thing? Because he's like um, starting this thing to, it was, was it originally just for extra packages? Yep. 
Yes. It was originally called the Fedora Linux Project all the way up until 2002. Yes. And then it became like... Uh, then it became Fedora Project. RHL Fedora died, Fedora. and then the old Fedora became Fedora Extras. Yeah. And the old RHL is Fedora Core, mm -hmm. which only Red Hat people can touch, which is very similar now to like CentOS Stream. Oh, God, yes. It, it's, 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 a, it's a... The, the yeah. time is a flat circle. Yes. And then like, yeah, I think I actually had uh, Debian on one machine when I got an... When I got a Mac laptop and speak of things, you know, like uh, going back full circle, I had an iBook G3 running Debian PPC. It was the first Mac with no serial port, which was fun. Like, uh, don't start like the, those like USB to serial adapters work fine on Linux because I need, yeah, I had a handspring visor that I connect to it to sync my contacts and everything. Fancy. It actually works. It's amazing. <laughs> work life. So yeah, like uh, skipping back, uh, skipping over a few years because like uh, it's grad school in between, and according to my family, you know, like uh, you know, like no, you're not really working; you're just in school. But I get paid. <laughs> no, it's not. Like well, the IRS said I'm working, so you know. But, yeah, employers also like uh, a lot of employers sadly also don't consider grad school to be work. We do at Meta, but only if you have a PhD. Then you count as someone with industry experience. Which means not much. Like I think you like a few thousand dollars extra. But yeah, look, don't go to P don't get a PhD to get more money. <laughs> <laughs> Unless your job requires a PhD. But yeah, so okay, first proper job is unfortunately not for a cool company. I was like uh, doing IT for like a hospital group. It's interesting. Like uh, you know, like a lot of like database, like uh, dealing with databases, like. Uh, the, they don't have a WAN, and when they first started having a WAN, finally, it was so slow. So basically, if you want to do something, you go to the site. And you have to work after midnight because they are using the system, right? So like, um, uh, that was fun. So I ended up basically kind of, I was doing database admin stuff because um, a lot of people don't know it well enough to touch it. Or like, um, and, uh, and the chip software developers we hire don't know how to tune databases, so it ended up being my work too, of course. <laughs> um, and yeah, like uh, it's like you know, it's interesting, but also you know, long hours. Like it's mm -hmm. you don't really get recognition. I don't really want to get into management. And yeah, but uh, the nicest thing I did was like rebuilding my servers uh, with Scientific Linux. Thank you, Troy. <laughs> and deploying free IPA, so because before that, of course, like everyone has their logins, like um, you oh, know, like, yes, we. The first thing we do when we have the WAN is like, oh, we have a WAN now. We can have free IPA. It's not fast enough to do things, but we can synchronize the like accounts, which is nice when it works. <clears throat> and then I was like, well, you know, like uh, I want to do something that's actually more rewarding. I moved to an internet service provider and started on April 1st, which is awesome because you can never tell whether it's true or not. You know, like I went to work the first day, like, will I have a job or is it actually a joke? You know, <laughs> but yeah, like um, you work for an ISP and suddenly Google say like, hey, do you want to interview? It's like, sure. So I went to Australia, I interviewed, I failed. <laughs> mm. And like, um, I failed the network interview, which like, to be fair, is actually, don't be disheartened. Uh, at Meta, we are also told that like, um, most of us, if we fail one interview, it's a network one. It's fine. Um, yeah. <clears throat> um, and then I realized that like, I, I told uh, the network engineer at work like, uh, about this problem that it's really interesting, but I don't know how to answer it correctly. And he does not know either. <laughs> it's like, damn it. You know, like, uh, I'm, I've reached my limit here, right? Like, uh, <laughs> So I, I moved to a different company. It's like, uh, it's a travel booking site. It's like Expedia, but in like uh, Asia. Um, and ended up basically, oh no, you, you'll come here and do DevOps. And then like, I came there and it's like, okay, there's no SourceForge. Everyone is compiling, everyone is committing straight to like GitHub uh, without code review. Everyone's building stuff on their, like, uh, on their laptop and deploying it in prod. <laughs> so. It's been a few years. So I can probably mention this by name, it's fine. So I was like, end up basically doing all these things, right? Like, uh, okay, let's, let's, you know, like have a forge, you know, like let's do code reviews. Like um, we use Fabricator by accident. You know, it's not because it's, you know, it came from Facebook or something. It looks really nice, it works fine. 
I'm really sad that it didn't take off as soon as it's doing Galanche. So we finally have Jenkins. Apologies for people who don't like Jenkins. I don't like it either in a retrospect, but you know. It's a trigger word. Yes. <laughs> uh, build engineering, because obviously, you know, like uh, people, we use like Java, you know, like with IntelliJ IDEA. So Gradle is a default build system. And like, if you don't keep massaging the dependencies, the build time gets slower and slower because you are. That's Gradle. Gradle. And also, the dependency like explodes over time, right? And so I'm the one editing. Like, can we, you know, can we make sure we only use a single version of this dependency? It's painful. <laughs> and desktop management because like, uh, let's make sure that every laptop is set up the same way, so like, you know, developers don't waste their time actually like setting up. And yeah. And then I ended up at um, Facebook, um, Facebook reached out and do you want to interview? And that was fun. And so like I, so I, just before like uh, Google said like, hey, do you want to re-interview? It's like, well. So yeah, I started at Facebook just before the 2016 election. So not fun, you know, like uh, it gets shocking. It's like, oh my God, <laughs> you know, like, oh, let's see Brexit, like uh, the Philippine election, the US election, Cambridge Analytica. So yeah, not fun for mobile, like um, let's stop there. Um, back then, until last year, like uh, at Facebook, like you know, when you join, you get eight weeks of training. You can choose your team because most people are not assigned to a team. So it's like, you know, like you spend like two or three weeks of classes and then you shop around and like look at which team you want to join. And I got sold on doing Dev Infra because uh, Brent O'Sullivan, who wrote Mercurial and <clears throat> And I met because like, uh, in, I took over his LLVM package in Fedora. Um, he was there. Oh, he's the director like, uh, in like, uh, Dev Infra. So I talked to him. He said, like, you should join his school. I ended up working on this really, really amazingly clowny project called Mobile Device Lab, where we pretend our mobile phones we use for performance testing are actually computers. Oh. And we manage them in asset management and everything with Chef, as if they are a, they are a computer. It's, it works amazingly well. Except when it doesn't. <laughs> like, we have funny issues, like, uh, you know, like iPhones can be upgraded but not upgraded. And, like, if you don't block access to, like, uh, to the network, it will auto update itself. And then it will go to this mode where you have to finish the setup. So we cannot manage them until someone goes and poke at buttons. Mm. It's, and, like, oh, yeah, like, phones are not meant to be running connected to, like, AC power, like, 24 uh, 7. And when you do, the batteries start bloating. And we don't have enough scale to, you know, like, oh, just go to, like, Samsung and, can you give me like a bot without a battery? We were not that big, so. And then, and then I moved to the next also kind of clammy thing, like uh, let's manage like Linux on desktops. Again, it's like, I know this, right? Like I did this before, it's fine. Like there's a talk uh, about it at the federal conference. And yeah, and now like I'm doing Linux in space, no des not desktop or server, so it's um, uh, but for a while, like we are under the kernel organization. So when explaining to people internally, it's really funny. Like, yeah, I'm a kernel PE. No, I don't work on the kernel. <laughs> I don't remember the last time I compiled the kernel, but yeah, anyway. So yeah, um, so we are a Linux shop. We run Linux on custom data centers with billions of servers. Uh, we are not allowed to say how many exactly, and I don't remember anyway. Uh, we kind of open source our like uh, container management system, which predates uh, Docker. So it's not like we don't want this Docker. We already had something else, um, and we mostly run CentOS stream, um, mostly on nine by now. Uh, eight is about to EOL like uh, next month if you are still on eight, and we have ELN, which is uh, Fedora rebuilt to target enterprise Linux, um, running on a small number of machines to make sure that we are ready for any coming changes. Uh, we use CentOS Stream because it's, um, we used to use uh, normal CentOS before Stream comes up. And normal CentOS is a bug by bug a rebuild of Red Hat Enterprise, meaning if we find something, well, we can report the issue and then, like, we have to wait um, to, get, to get it fixed. Uh, CentOS Stream is a bit more open. You can actually submit changes. Um, but the nice thing about CentOS is the Life cycle is predictable, and mostly the ABI does not break. Uh, you know, like there are there's this thing called application stability guarantee, and it tells you which package is under which level, and what you can expect uh, for each level. 
<coughs> we upgrade key components. Like we run our own kernel because we have kernel developers. We run our own systemd and like a few other things. And you might have seen this from federal conferences, except this is the one last year, so obviously, but still, same like, uh, so CentOS uh, is uh, branched off from Fedora every six release, so every three years. And this year, like, uh, CentOS 10 should come up. We, we have Fedora machines running on um, desktop and laptops. Uh, this is not a primary thing. Like, um, my old company, we use Fedora because, uh, we use Linux laptops because it's cheaper. Um, but, you know, Silicon Valley, like, everyone wants a Mac because it's shiny. <laughs> to, uh, to be fair now with the Silicon Macs, I don't blame them either. Like, I use a Mac too. Um, yeah, you can't talk anymore. I, can't, I cannot make fun of these people anymore. Yes. <laughs> uh, so most of our employees are on Macs, uh, and then like Windows second, and Fedora is third, which is kind of the problem, right? You don't have the scale, so people don't invest in it. What can you do? Uh, but yeah, um, so when I was on the desktop team, we switched people over from Ubuntu to Fedora. It used to be like we say, like, you know, run whatever you want, but it's like, it's really hard to manage, right? So we try to standardize on Fedora. Um, mostly so that newer hardware works out of the box. Uh, this was before we basically ended up being mostly like, most PCs have NVIDIA video cards, and it turns out like you probably want something that actually has, um, you know, like upstream support. <clears throat> we have Ubuntu, we have to support Ubuntu for some things like uh, our open source projects. Uh, the ones that are on GitHub, the CI mostly run uh, Ubuntu, so, and it used to be run on some desktops. So yeah, why do we contribute to open source? Uh, well, um, we have a lot of open source projects ourselves, and like, um, if we get them packaged in distributions, it's easier for people to be aware of them and to install them rather than just you know like do pip install or like uh, do like a cargo build something and then you wait for like a few hours. Um, we are mostly an Intel, well, x86-64 shop. We have, and so like uh, distributions like, especially De Debian, but like uh, also like Fedora, built for way more architectures. So we can leverage that and say like, hey, if our code actually does not work in like um, certain architectures, or if we build with a different compiler, uh, then we know and we can fix it. Otherwise we don't know it. Um, and basically, like, um, we don't really want to basically, like, uh, carry too many changes, like, uh, internally, because then they get harder and harder to rebase if you, if you have seen how, like, Android, like, uh, development, like, um, uh, works. That can be a problem, right? Uh, vendors, like, change too much, and then they cannot rebase, so they are stuck, like, phones are normally never, like, uh, updated to a new kernel. And yeah, like, I mean, like, we don't want to reinvent the wheel. Like, uh, distributions have the expertise in building Linux. Like, we don't. So, so we used to have, like, an internal repo with a lot of packages that are not very well maintained. And we, we are now basically saying, you cannot, you are not allowed to build open source software inside our repo. Like, you know, like, if you want to build some packages, do it in the distro. Uh, we contribute to Fedora because uh, it's the upstream for CentOS. <coughs> And it's also easier to get things into Fedora, and then like, hopefully by default they will eventually end up in CentOS Stream. And also that um, CentOS Stream is uh, curated like only only the packages Red Hat want to support are available, and every shop that runs CentOS or RHEL basically need extra packages that are not supported, and you can get them into um, Apple, which is the extra packages uh, repo. And that's part of Fedora, so like we have to contribute to Fedora anyway. And yeah, so so we contribute uh, fixes CentOS stream when we can, and like uh, and we also have like uh, this thing called we also have a special interest group in CentOS called the Hyperscale SIG, and we can carry bug fixes and like um, updates to CentOS that is not um, available in the stock version. Um, we contribute some things to Debian, just because by default, uh, to get things into Ubuntu, like you have to build them. To get things into Ubuntu, you have to package them for Debian anyway, unless you want to permanently have an L have a PPA like a repo. So yeah, and 
we use Ubuntu, but we don't really contribute directly. We just get things into Debian and ship a PPE. So yeah, um, uh, there's a mismatch between how you know like uh, distributions work and how companies work, right? Like uh, companies distributions don't see us as a company. We see, they say like, oh, there's a bunch of people at Meta who are like doing some packaging. So and that's fine. Like that's how we work. Right? Like we we don't try to say like no, you know, like we are give us like a special like a group so we can comment in our packages or something. And yeah, and that's fine. Like um, <coughs> so in Fedora, we basically we contribute to uh, change proposals. Like um, there's a few that um, like we got we helped get Fedora uh, 33 like uh, switch over to ButterFS by default. Thank you, Neil. Um, we helped like um, we we campaigned to get um, frame pointers enabled by default because our developers and even Red Hat desktop developers. They want it so that when you when you like do performance profiling, it tells you which part are slow, and before you don't know, right? Like uh, there's slowdown in this function, but we don't know which function it is. <coughs> uh, we maintain a lot of packages in Fedora. Some of them because we need it for work, and some of them just for fun. Because uh, from experience, it tends to be that the people who are interested in packaging are the ones who are using Linux in uh, in their own spare time anyway. Mm -hmm. And uh, Apple, that we mentioned before, like uh, we we contributed to some of the workflow changes to make it easier to maintain packages. So some changes, um, like uh, ButterFS by default. Um, I think in thirty four we enable compression by default, and I forgot to put it there. In thirty five, Neil and David Duncan got the Cloud Edition moved to ButterFS as well. So I think now it's only server that's not ButterFS, right? Yeah. Well, and the funny thing is that the change that you left off is the one that you spearheaded. Which one? The compression one. Yeah, I forgot. That's the one that you Yes, I actually made Anacon. See, I, <laughs> I think I tried to forget that. <laughs> <laughs> it, was a, it was a weird change. Yes. And frame pointer, which I mentioned. And sometimes it fails. like. Um, Anything to do with like integrity work is uh, really really hard to get in it seems. But yeah, you know. And yeah, like so we we maintain like a uh, some projects in Fedora. Like uh, for example, like we have um, below. Below is not a top. It's a resource like um, it's an interactive like a uh, resource uh, usage uh, tool. Uh, we have Dragon, which is like a kernel debugger written in Python, so you can. You can run it in IPython and have all the nice like uh, Python uh, stuff like uh, and libraries. We have a Python interface to uh, systemd called systemd, obviously. Uh, I think this one has been moved to the. Um, I'm not sure if that link is correct. It's now in the systemd org. Yeah, it's yes. in the systemd org yeah. now. And makeOS image, which you can use to de decla declaratively build um, OS images like uh, Fedora, CentOS, um, Ubuntu. Arch Linux, I think, because Magia. Does it do Gen two? I think it does Gen two. It, no, he ripped it out. It was bad. <laughs> okay, but yeah, the main developer is an Arch uh, user, so it obviously builds Arch images. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, um, Apple. Okay, yeah, that link really needs to go out. Yeah. <laughs> Talk from Saturday. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, that didn't happen. No. Yeah, this is Saturday. <laughs> Oh, this is like from last year's uh, scale, and I forgot to take out the slide. So yeah, um, so this is what happens every um, every three years. Uh, Fedora is branched off uh, to make CentOS, and then like at some point, like uh, RHEL gets branched off from CentOS stream. Um, yeah, as I mentioned earlier, it's similar to how you used to have Fedora Core and Fedora Extras, and you can contribute to one but not to the other. Um, so the problem with doing this split is that a lot of Fedora people, most Fedora people want the shiny, like, latest things, and they say, we want to contribute to Fedora, we don't want to maintain our packages for 10 years. So they don't really want to touch Apple. So in Apple, every Apple release starts off empty and say, like, well, you fill it in with the packages you need and nothing else. So, like, we, you know, like, if we don't prepare early, we are like, okay, we, we need these 10 packages. They transitively depend on 300 packages that none of them are in Apple, and you have to back the maintainer one by one. Can you please branch and build? And you have to build it in a, in a certain order, otherwise, like, uh, 
so like a single maintainer can derail like um, getting all the software available, <coughs> and yeah, like so um, so now there is um, there is this process that we uh, that that I pioneered uh, for actually saying look you know this is a procedure for asking for a package and we time box it so like if the maintainer does not respond at some point you can say hey I tried asking nicely it doesn't happen the maintainer might be busy or something can I get access to the package. So now like it takes three weeks at most and you can do it in parallel for all the packages you need. Um, we have some tooling like eBranch um, for making this like uh, more automated. You can skip that. And yeah, like um, I think this is like uh, what happened when I first started using eBranch. Uh, at some point we get like 400 packages like uh, built. Um, to be fair, this is, um, these are mostly Rust packages and Rust packages are easier because they are group maintained and not maintained by individuals. So you already have access by default. Uh, yeah, uh, let's see some links to CentOS. So hyperscale uh, SIG is what we do for like uh, to make our secret sauce on top of CentOS, not something we have to maintain in-house. Um, it used to be a collaboration of between like uh, Meta and like uh, several other companies. Now like uh, Neil is here. Neil is no longer at Dato, and the Twitter people mostly disappeared, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah well. But, um, the Intel people are still there, and they yeah. do cool stuff. Like they, uh, they use hyperscale to like uh, as a as a proving ground for like a uh, optimized yeah. optimizing binaries uh, for Intel like uh, CPUs. So yeah, we have some things in like uh, like uh, in hyperscale. Like uh, we need a special kernel. Thank you, Neil, for maintaining our kernel because um, Red Hat disabled ButterFS in uh, RHEL and CentOS, and we need uh, ButterFS. Well, internally we use our own kernels, but like uh, for hyperscale, it's nice to actually have a kernel that actually works. And we have we have like a public repo that's not. Um, meant for like general use but you can if you want if you want to poke at it like we we compile some things with like additional logging because you know like security requirements i Wait, think fish, fish might not fish might not be there anymore one of i think bash is still there bash is there i don't think we've got fish there yeah i think we fish was fish fixed point, we yeah uh, we actually got it fixed upstream I've seen that you do as well. Yes. Yeah, so I'm that's, a fish user, yeah. so I'm aware yeah. that it's not there anymore. This slide needs to be updated as well. Um, yeah, so let's see. I think I need to take down the Hyperscale 8 um, You're link soon. You're missing the spin target as well. Yes. But yeah, um, stuff we do in Debian, like um, Arch Linux Keering, is, uh, it's something we do just because like a uh, uh, make OS image needs to need some packages available so it can build you know like a uh, arch linux um, uh, images and yeah like um our ubuntu stuff is mostly in a ppa because we cannot really contribute directly so after ubuntu stops syncing from debian like every six months any change that we want to make is easier to just uh, build it ourselves put it in the ppa and call it a day so what what have you learned from like uh, working with uh, distributions well <coughs> You really don't want to do it yourself because, you know, like you, um, uh, like right now in Fedora, we have two people who are sponsors, so we can sponsor new uh, contributors. We have one person, me, who has proven package access, so I can, I can build any package, even though I'm not in the ACL. We have two Debian developers, not one on an affiliated team, like uh, one on a different team, and yeah, it's um. It makes it easier when you can just ask someone, you know, like, a, and you know their working hours, like, a, like a, to like a do, do, do a review of your package or something. Is Dada a proven packager as well? I'm no, no, he's a sponsor. Oh. It's confusing. Fabio is a proven packager, but not a sponsor, which also confused me. What? Huh? I thought, wait, is he? I might be. Hey, I'm I confused. Hope, I hope not. I, I, hope, also, I hope he's also a sponsor. Anyway, yeah, like uh, we need to fix this data, and we have a bunch of people who work on like hyperscale. <clears throat> so yeah, like um, 
so we we don't try to bypass the process we don't say like hey you know like come on we know each other just stamp my review you know like no like uh, please uh, review it properly but it's you know like if you have a re personal relationship with someone like it's you can you can ask them for things that you know if you if, if this there's a, like there's a package or who something that you've never met and you're like hey can you do this thing for me it's like well sure when i have time uh some changes take a long time like uh when i when i started working on debian it took months to get to debian maintainer status which is like a normal packager and like if you want to get full debian developer it probably takes a few years and uh in even in fedora which is fast moving like it takes a while like i think neil has been was working for years to get butterfs uh, used by default and it took a lot of push before it finally happens uh frame pointer landed in 38 it it under the under the promise that we will review it and if it's disastrously slow we will rip it off and like um so it only became settled with federal 40 when we say no like nobody's complaining so obviously it's fine and yeah um you should contribute if you don't have time to contribute at least report the issues that you find otherwise nobody knows or right like um <clears throat> Uh, with uh, enterprise distribution, if you don't have a support contract, they might not really look at your uh, bug reports, but at least someone else can go there and see like, oh, someone has the same issue. Um, don't do things like internally as much as possible because you'll just reinvent the wheel and nobody will want to maintain it long term. And yeah, you need to work with the community, build relationships, like, uh, and it's easier to do things once you know people. And this is a song reference that I mentioned earlier <laughs> to some people. And yeah, like, um, I didn't start off like uh, wanting to be like an SRE PE type. I didn't know, even know that exists. Like, you were like, if you work on computers, you, you know, you must want to be a developer, like a software engineer. Uh, you might not know what you want to do. Like, uh, you might want to change your mind and say like, no, like, uh, I, I don't like doing this. Like, um, so always, Always, you know, like keep your eyes and ears open. Like, uh, if you see something that's actually more interesting, don't be afraid to like uh, take it. I mean, like, how many chances do you get in life, right? Um, Only one. Yeah. So that's me and that's my team. And like, uh, feel free to ask any question. And thank you for coming. Didn't expect so many people. Eight. Eight. We have eight minutes for questions. David. How, how do you deal with teams that aren't ready to upstream? Uh, we, normally, <laughs> we normally let them be like a one. We have, I have an example that's kind of similar, not quite not ready. Like a, we have uh, the Facebook built system, uh, Buck. Buck is open source. But uh, it's basically impossible to like, get into distributions because they, they use nightly features. Yay. <laughs> which we you know like so like uh, and they are not all on like a uh, uh, crates.io so some teams do open source but they don't do it in a way that's easy to consume some teams like uh some teams like uh we have this uh c++ library called folly which is open source it's fine you can use it uh but we are uh we are a monorepo like a company so we don't do versioning because who cares like like no we want the ability to like break the api anytime mm -hmm. so it's fun to maintain in the distributions. Like we got it to Fedora as a proof concept. I don't want to get it in Debian because it'll be impossible. Because yeah. Debian say, no, no, no. Whenever you change an ABI, you have to rename your package and then you have to go through additional review, which is fine. It's a nice gatekeeper to make sure you don't do shit uh, clowny things. And this is a bit clowny, so. Well, and you have to also do the package transition dance, yes. which is not fun yep. either. But in general, yeah, like uh, <laughs> if, Teams don't want to open source things, then fine, right? Like we, we are not, you know, we, our mission is not to like, the more they open source, if they don't maintain it themselves, like the more there is for us, right? Like the more work to actually fix it, so. It's trickier sometimes when like we do want, we have things where we have patches, we want to upstream, and the upstream doesn't want to take it, so. So what do you do in that case? Um, 
So we have it if in one case, I don't think I want to name the package, but we are exploring using another fork that people do because of the same reasons, because the, the other upstream doesn't really want to take patches. It's a, it's a complicated road. It's, mm. yeah. Neil. Yeah. So um, as you've bounced around in all these different things and done it in, in these, uh, you know, across your, the, the past few years, in the different projects that you've had, what was the kind of res uh, how did you feel on the balance? Was your was the response to you engaging in communities, um, given the fact that I know that you don't hide the fact that you work for Facebook slash yes. uh, how does how does that how does that play into how you interact with open source projects? So inside Fedora, it's normally fine and people are friendly. Um, except when you bring up changes that are unpopular, like FS Verity, and then they're like, oh, it's a meta conspiracy to blah, 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 you know. <laughs> um, or so butter FS frame or frame pointers, <laughs> yes. But in general, so it depends. It depends on what you're doing. Mm -hmm. in, in Debian, I learned that if you don't have to, even saying meta in a descriptive way, saying like, hey, can someone take a look at this? And I was like, trying to describe the package. This is like a, a tool that Meta uses for like, a, you know, like logging like a kernel messages. And oh. no, you get snarky responses. Oh. Pe people don't like uh, fail the package because it's for Meta, but they, they were like, is this supposed to be a positive? I was like, I didn't say it's going to be like, I was like, okay, next time I just won't mention it. <laughs> but no, otherwise people are generally okay. I mean like, I know Debian is used by a lot of like uh, finance companies, so it's not like <laughs> which one is you know. <laughs> uh, anyone else? Great. Oh Actually, yes. Yeah. Uh, since you've worked on a lot of different environments and whatnot, in a kind of professional corporate setting, how how has that changed the way that you do things at home, or or what is? What is your uh, personal setup uh, like? Good question. I, I find that, so in sometimes, you know, like sometimes you, there are things where because you're doing it at work and you really like it, you also do it in your spare time. And sometimes they are like, well, you know, like I, like I, Fedora is mostly on my work machines and on my work machines, on my personal machines, I use other things just because I spend so much time during working hours working on Fedora stuff anyway. So like I, if I don't run other things um, on the site, I won't have time for them. Um, there are things that, like, um, we use Chef at work, and Fedora mostly use Ansible. Personally, I wouldn't use Chef on my personal machines, just because it's a bit. So yeah, sometimes what you learn, and you like, you learn the goods and the bads, and then you're like, well, you know, maybe you really like it, and maybe you're like, okay, you know, like, I'll do it if you pay me to, but otherwise I don't want to. <laughs> That's how I was about some things when I worked at Datto. Yep. All right. Um, any last question? Thank you, everyone.